Welcome back in Missionary's Deception. Again, we're still talking about the divinity of Jesus. I challenge any Christian to find me in this beautiful book, the Holy Bible, anywhere where Jesus is saying, I am God, or worship me. If this is the way to salvation, why isn't he clear about this? Why he never told us directly that he is God? Worship me. God Almighty said in the Quran several times, I am God. There is no God except me. Worship me. So many times because if this is the way to salvation, why isn't it clear? But actually, even in the Quran, the way to salvation is not just to believe in God, but also to make the good deeds. But this is something else. Again, we're saying, according to the Christian teachings, the way to your salvation is to believe that Jesus is God, but still this is not anywhere in the Bible clearly. All what's there in the Bible are verses which need twisting to mean that Jesus is God. But if you take these verses within the context, you don't see them saying anywhere that Jesus is God. For example, let me ask you a question. Do you agree with me that God is the greatest? Or do you think that anyone can be greater than God? Of course, God is the greatest. Well, if you go to John 14, 28, you will see Jesus saying, the Father is greater than I. The Father is greater than I. This means that the Father is greater than him. This means that he is not God. He cannot be God. If God is the greatest, then how come anyone can be greater than God? Do you agree with me that God is able to do everything? Well, of course, yeah. God is able to do everything. If not, then he's not God. If you go to John 5.30, you will see Jesus saying, of myself, I can do nothing. What does that mean? How can God say so? How can God be unable to do anything? But he's saying, I can do nothing. Can God do nothing? Can God be able to do nothing? Do you agree with me that God knows everything? Well, if you look, to, uh, look at Mark 13, 32, you will see Jesus saying, but of that day and that hour, he's speaking about the day of judgment, no one has knowledge, not even the angels, nor the Son, but the Father. So the angels don't know about the day of judgment, nor the Son knows about the day of judgment. Jesus is saying that he doesn't know about the day of judgment. How can God doesn't know about the day of judgment? Do you think God speaks for himself? Or not? Do you think that God receives revelation or reveals to prophets? Of course, God doesn't receive revelation from anyone. But you see, John 8, 26, Jesus is saying, Whatsoever I have heard from him, these things I speak. Which means I, he doesn't speak. He doesn't say anything which he did not hear from God, because he's a messenger delivering a message. All what we are reading now uh, is from the Bible, and it means that Jesus is a messenger. Does God pray? How can God pray to someone else? Or is he going to pray to himself? See here in Matthew 27, 46, Jesus is praying, saying, my God, my God. What does he mean? Myself, myself? If you see Mark 15, 34, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why did you leave me? Does he mean myself, myself? What did you leave myself? How, how can anyone understand this as the one who's saying so, praying to God, showing this weakness to God that he is God? If we also uh, open Matthew 26, 39. And he, Jesus, went a little further and fell on his face and prayed. He prostrated. Have you seen Muslims praying before? Prostrating on the floor? In sujood? 
That's what Jesus was do doing. Does that mean that God prostrated himself on the floor? Does that mean that, that God was prostrating himself for himself? How can anyone say so? How did his disciples perceive him? This is very important. His own disciples, his own students, how did they see him? Did they see him as God or did they see him as a prophet? Did they see him as a messenger? Let's see here in Acts 2, 22. Peter, his closest disciple, like Abu Bakr for, for the Muslims, by the way. Peter is saying, men of Israel, listen to these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with miracles and wonders and signs which God performed through him in your midst, just as yourselves know. Well, give me any other definition for a prophet. This is the definition of a prophet. A man sent by God with miracles and wonders. That's what, this is how Peter is describing his teacher, Jesus. And then comes people now and say that Jesus was God. In Luke 24, 19, and he said to them, what things? And they said to him, the things about Jesus, the Nazarene, who was a prophet, mighty indeed, and word in the sight of God and all the people. He was a prophet, mighty, a mighty prophet. One of the mightiest five prophets, by the way, according to Islam. The first one is Noah, Abraham, Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad. Those are the mightiest five prophets, five messengers of God who suffered most and had big impact on the world. But they see, here see, they always tell you, you see, you didn't see how many miracles did Jesus do? He cursed a tree, a fig tree, and then it became dry. He, he walked on the water. He uh, uh, healed the, 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 the leprous. Excuse me. These miracles are not a sign of divinity, but rather a sign of humanity. Because if he is divine, if he is God, these are not miracles then. Why will the disciples be shocked when he performs these miracles? If he is God, then this is normal because he is God. But because he is human, this is considered a miracle. Shocking people, make people sur show surprise. In Matthew 21, 18, 24, we will read here about the miracle that Jesus performed and the disciples were surprised. This surprise means that Jesus is not divine. He is human. In the morning, as he was returning to the city, he became hungry. God is hungry? He became hungry because he's a human being. And seeing a fig tree by the wayside, he went to it and found nothing on it but only leaves. And he said to it, may no fruit ever come from you again. And the fig tree withered at once. When the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, how did the fig tree wither at once? And Jesus answered them, truly, I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what has been done to the fig tree, but even if you say to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea, it will, be, it will happen. And whatever you ask in prayer, you will receive if you have faith. So here we see the, the disciples marveling because this is a strange thing that happened. How can a human being like Jesus curse a tree and then it withers at once? Jesus is explaining to them. He didn't say, it's because I'm God. No, he said, because if you have faith and you have no doubt, this can also happen to you. Jesus here is saying, because he has faith in God, this is a miracle. And if you read here the Quran, you will see that the Quran and the Bible are compliant when they speak about Jesus here. When Allah will say, O oh Jesus, son of Mary, Remember my favor on you and your mother. When I strengthened you with the Holy Spirit, you spoke to the people in the cradle and when of old age. And when I taught you the scripture and the wisdom and the Torah and the evangel. 
And when you determined out of clay the figure of a bird by my permission. And then you breathed into it and it became a bird by my permission. And you healed the blind and the lepers by my permission. And when you brought forth the dead by my permission. You see here that the Quran and the, uh, of course that was in uh, uh, Surah Al-Ma'idah, chapter number 5, verse 110. The Quran and the Holy Bible are compliant when they speak about Jesus. Both of them are saying that he is not God, he was just a prophet. In the next episode, we will continue. Inshallah.